Hey guys, and how's it going? This is gonna be uh, part two of this Centaur folding suitcase scooter. It sat for, I don't know, 40, 50 years in someone's garage slash barn. Uh, a fellow subscriber had hooked me up with it a couple weeks ago that he was on a pick. He got a two wheel tractor with a bunch of implements and this was sitting in the corner. So the guy gave it to him and then he sent it my way. Thank you, Dan, I appreciate that. Anyway, uh, so the last video, we were able to get the engine running. We got to go spin the back tire. We got the clutch and the CVT of the transmission working, did the carburetor, uh, magneto, all that kind of stuff. And we were able to get it to run, and uh, work with the pull start, got all those pieces cured and fixed. So now we're gonna continue that torch and move on further to see if we get more of the other stuff done. I got a list that's on the bench over there, but essentially uh, the gas tank's real cruddy. We have no brakes. The tires are shot, uh, we need a throttle, air cleaner, you know, things like that. The covers, the other side cover is on right now on the back side, but the cover that was on this side was really trashed. It was missing a piece, they're just plastic. Uh, but I did score that last piece of plastic from him. They were able to find it where the scooter was. So possibly we can put that cover together good enough to use. Anyway, let's go pop you off the stand. Give you a quick little look for those who haven't seen it. The first time around this bar comes out the front tire comes off and the handlebars tuck in this whole handlebar assembly flips up and over inside the tire i'm not sure where it tucks in i think it possibly the tire front end sits here and then the handlebars come in we haven't gotten to that part of folding it up yet 1961 6061 is the year that's what it looks like with the cover on it yeah this is the good one and since I put the last video up, you know, I, I got like 800 links to different parts and uh, videos of other bikes running. So I do appreciate that. But uh, they, whether they still sell them or not, but apparently they sell these covers for 60 bucks a piece. Whether they're still available or not, I don't know, but there is a listing for them. So I'm not that concerned about its looks right now. We're still just kind of working on getting the mechanicals all the work. Oh, you want, we also want to check for... Uh, power out for lights and some other stuff. The shock is bent on the back. And do I have anything else on my list? Fuel tank, brakes, tires, throttle, light power, headlight, kill switch, and rear shock. So that is our list for stuff that we're going to try to attempt to get done today. All right, enough talking. Let me uh, start getting into doing some wrenching. What do you want to start on first? I would say probably maybe we'll get that rear brake and wheel off of there we can see what we have for brakes if it is usable if we need to go chase something or not so let's go start with that actually for just giggles let's go throw some fuel in it and we'll put a test light on the one of these two wires was the power wire out going for the headlight and the tail light let's go hang a test light on fire it up and see if the light lights up we'll know if that magneto is any good so the light is down there it's a 12 volt light and we're only be putting six volts to it so if it, even if it does light up i don't suspect it's going to be very very bright but yeah we're just going to go see if we get anything out of it all right uh we're going to go with no choke let's give it a little throttle how about some choke <laughs> This is going well. Turn that choke off. All right, light lights up. Cool. Actually, that was brighter than I thought it was going to be too. Might have been 12 volts, but it's 1961. Usually all that stuff was around that size. We could probably take the bulb out of the tail light and see if it says six volt or 12 volt. Sure has a funky system back here. So this part floats and as the clutch moves in and out on here and the belt changes different sizes, this compensates for it. It's kind of like half of a CVT transmission, but it's also on the same swing arm and what we got for a brake cable? There is a brake cable going back up to a lever up there. So you get that brake cable off and it looks like we just take that nut off and see what happens, see what will drop out. What do you think the chances are that that's gonna come out? Oh, 
as much as I thought. <laughs> Impact socket's too fat, so I have to go to regular. <coughs> yeah, I didn't think it was gonna go that easy. Let's go get like a brass rod or something, give her a couple of whacks. be a long slow process it's bound up on the, the center of the hub I'm gonna get something smaller now it'll fit so you can drive the rest of the way through Still not moving. It looks like it's got some kind of break or lock. I don't know if you can see it. It's right here. Keeps the drum from turning. I wonder if we can get this assembly out of our way. There we go. Yeah, that gives us room for it to slide forward or back. It looks like it's just sitting in there. Clear the brake drum. There it goes. I see it. There we go. We're free. It's reset so you can see the tire. Hmm. Brake shoes don't look bad. The amount of material is still good on them. That's all the ooze. That's all the crap that's oozing out of the bearing. Sixty-year-old ooze. <laughs> Even better on this side. Well, it's better grease than not. Actually, it has a grease fitting. All right, so we're gonna need definitely a tire and tube for that. Uh, let's go shopping. So that's a four ten by three fifty by six. That's a six inch rim. We need to go find something that resembles that size. Uh, they're going to be too big. They're Honda 70. Yeah, too small. They have like a weird metric size. One ten by fifty. 110 by 50, that's not going to work. And this fresh arrival of a pallet, thanks to another subscriber, had uh, dropped off a load of uh, old tractor ropes. And I'm not sure what these wheels are from, but 410, 356. May not exactly be the best tread, but they will fit. And it looks like they got tubes in them too. Might work out just fine. Let's go dig them out, them out. We'll bring them downstairs and uh, do a swap. That's a tad bit bigger. And again, the tire on the right doesn't have any air in it. I don't think the tread's all that much worse either. <laughs> I don't think this one was all that non-slip. So I think it has just like six bolts on it. This one, this is going to be the pain in the ass one to take off because the rim doesn't split, but this one comes apart. Yeah, looks like everything's got to come off. Looks like the, you take the hub out. These three hold the hub. And then this six holds the wheel together. Do we need to take the hub out? Yeah, it's hard to say. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to shoot some juice on them and give them a rat, rat, rat. Get them all apart.
inside the room looks amazingly good. I was not expecting that. I thought it was going to be nothing but a pile of rust and have to weld little rot holes on it. I'm going to go clean this up over the parts washer. I'm not going to go paint anything. It always can be done later, but I really kind of like stuff that looks the part. That brake shoe surface got a bunch of rust on it. See if we can go wire wheel that off of there. Yeah, this thing is uh, 49 cc's, but it's said to go 40 miles an hour. I have a feeling that might be on a good downhill. A lot of weight on it. But these tires are four ply, because I'm going to do 40 on these tires. Try to anyway. Four ply, and they say 50 psi, so they're not like a, a wheelbarrow tire. One of those. Uh, cheap Harbor Freight tires you get for like your to wheel your generator around on. Now one of these has a stem. And does that tube favor one side? Yeah, we'll call it that side. Watch should not fit. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm going to throw the valve cap on it just so I don't lose. I don't know if it's going to help it or not. And which way did the bolts go? <laughs> I think they all went, the hub was on this side, correct? I don't remember. <laughs> I, I think they all went downward. I think they were all facing, I think all the threads were facing the same way. Like I tell you one thing, they are now. Let me go bolt that up and I'll bring you back for something a little bit more exciting. What do you think? Yeah, 20 pounds. Yeah, 22. Feels good. I still got the brakes and stuff to clean up. I'll just go through those. Is it lever free? Yeah. And while we're at it, might as well take the back seat off. Back seat's the only seat it's got. <laughs> Maybe we'll get this plastic off of here and it'll give us access to this, this bench shock that's on here. We'll see if we can get this lever working again. It looks like it's, it's seized up somewhere on it. Not doing what it should be doing. And we probably give it a once over, maybe uh, like a Scotch Bright and some safety clean. We'll clean up the ass end of the frame. Get all this crap off of here. We should probably take a peek at that too. <laughs> we need to. Maybe we'll take that on a wire wheel and give her a little bit. Yeah, let's, let's disassemble some more. Two ground, two ground wires up top, and then there's a, a brake light switch that was hooked to the spring that was on the brake lever. That's how that works. I don't think that 
Move in there. No. I have to try to go. There it goes. <laughs> that didn't take too much. Not that it electrically works, but at least it's moving in and out. That rear swing arm way up in the air and it's free. There's nothing holding it. Let's see if we can get that to back off. Yeah. How's that supposed to work? Like that. I definitely think that we need to bend that straight. It looks like it was, it's 400 pound limit was exceeded <laughs> how does that how does this work though what's the i don't understand what this part would do so you release that it allows it to flip hmm. do you think you are supposed to adjust it for a different ride height do you think I think that slot right there I'm looking at. You think that is just for let's just take it right apart. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the purpose of the cylinder off is bent, maybe we can articulate it more. Whole ass thing's gonna drop out now. There we go. So that just meant to do that. I get it. I can see that be the stowaway position. The tire would be all the way up and tucked out of the way, and then in ride position. But I don't understand. And there's no way to tighten that neither. You know, it's just it's just gonna stay wherever it is. Hmm. I guess we'll figure it out when we put it back together. Let's go take that strut off, the shock off, see if we can fix that. I don't think it has any dampening to it. I think it's just a spring. <laughs> I don't think it's much of anything right now. Maybe that's why it's... Bent. Okay, she doesn't doesn't do the squishy act no more. Damn it. Hard tail. Come on, you're like right there. There's nothing holding you. Let's go take that over to the vise and see if we can figure out what's happening with this thing. But I wouldn't exactly say it has the most of Maybe an inch of travel. Let's throw some heat on that, see if we can get that to... that up got it straight so this in the center where it tightens down on it's kind of like yeah kind of like a bike seat you know it's got like the two ratcheting paws that go against each other and yeah they can kind of click in a different location so that's what it tightens down on when you crank the, the nut down you can lock that so I think somebody tried moving it in the wrong position and just bent it but it looks like it's meant to go on the outside of it is the all the way up and then that will bring the whole swing arm really far up is the plan uh something like, let's see if it'll do it i think something's bent 
because it doesn't clear like it should. But that would come up like that and really tuck that tire up into the frame. But, like I said, I think something's knocked out of the whack. I'll show you in a second. You can even see the fender wants to rest right about there. You look at the gap that's on this side and then the gap that's on this side, the hole. I don't know if it's the upper cage that's knocked out of whack or the rear swing arm. One of the two is not where it should be. And you can see it's even where the, the little spring perch, it's not even supposed to be touching that. It's supposed to be over and around that, but that's our gap. Uh, trying to see if that, that pivot point in the middle, if that thing is bent at all. You know, if it took a hit. I do not see anything. I'm thinking it's the cage. I don't know if you guys can tell. You're kind of relying on the angle that I'm holding the camera. But these floorboards and that rail seem to go fairly straight. And I'm kind of looking at the cage. And it looks like the cage is kicked. A little. Hmm. I am going to study it a little bit. <laughs> And I'll get back to you and figure out what we're, what we're dealing with here. One way or another, we're going to bend one one direction or another the other direction. Is it missing a pin? Can it? Actually, that would make it worse if I slide that together. That's even going to get worse if I close that gap up. I'm going to take a scotch break, some cleaning stuff. I'm going to wash some stuff off and then we'll revisit putting the ass end back together and where we need to uh, do some gentle persuasion. Well, you've heard of the aftermath, right? This is the after bath. Now we can kind of see what we got going on. Looks like there was something here and it ripped out. Uh, that might be part of what is the damage. I'm not sure. Probably it's out of whack. Oh, you know what that was? Kickstand. Probably had a little kickstand there. But you could look either side. You see down the end down there, it's about an inch wide. And you look down here, it's about two inches wide. And on this side, it's almost touching. Yeah, I don't know if you can see down up front there. It's a good, I don't know, inch and a half. So one of these is not like the other. So you gotta squeeze. I'm thinking it's the frame because that swing axle is pretty tough. You can see that frame is flexing pretty good. I say we just grab it with something right here and we just give it a the big squeeze and we try to get it to square off back into the center again. Yeah, I think it's the cage because I'm looking at the the swing arm and the rest of the frame up front. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty square. Let's get to squishing. Probably gonna have to hit it more so. Get the spring out of it, you know. Gonna have to overshoot it. Rather not put heat on. <laughs> Did I do anything for us? No. <laughs> it's exactly the same as what it was. Yeah. I wonder if we can get it up high enough where I can get a, a real good crank on it, you know? Hmm. We'll get it. It just doesn't know it yet. I have an idea, but I have a feeling is going to clear the bench off <laughs> without my, my want. Get that behind there and do some prying. on it. 
did something. Hopefully you didn't go too far. <laughs> that would suck. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's get that. I'm gonna lift that up, grab that for me, okay? Thanks. There we go. It can go a little, I don't know. No, I think we're okay. I think we'll leave it right where it is. I think that it looks like it tapers down a little bit on that side. I think we leave well enough alone. I don't think we have to get that perfect of it, you know. But I think we're we're definitely in the realm where everything seems like it lines up again. We're back center over the middle. Let's get that strut put back on there and see if it'll it'll fold up the rear wheel like it should. So I got it all cleaned up and put back together and that is in the ride position. I don't understand why it has that slide. So you can take it. I can see this for storage. It tucks the wheel up out of the way and it's you know now sitting flat as a suitcase. But in the ride position first of all you have to kind of get it where it's straight up to get the handle of the lock but what what is the point of this sliding like that I, I i don't understand why it needs to do that why isn't it just fixed up there and it just when you're ready to go right you know store it you store it and when you go back it goes back and, and you lock down. What does what does that give you? What what's the purpose of that? I just don't understand it. Well, it works. I think we keep moving forward and we just <laughs> worry about it. Maybe it'll answer its own question as we move forward. Uh, I think we could put the back tire assembly back on. Uh, it's all cleaned up and ready to go. Hopefully, that tire clears all the. Uh, fenders and that kind of thing, but we're gonna go find that out right now. And I believe it's gonna go something like yeah, put the chain on, brake drum goes in, and then this goes like that. So all that has to get shoved up in there and then put the pinch bolt through it. And where's, what direction does that go? Probably something right about there. Wish me luck. Yep, it was a pain in the ass. That's pretty good though. See if you can grab the brake. Yeah. Well, that still needs to get hooked up to there. That's the spring-loaded part of it. I guess we could throw we could throw those two pieces on. And what do you want to do next? Let me get those on and we'll figure it out. Well, the fender doesn't hit, but it's like super close. And I think it took a hit. The cylinder smashed into the back of the fender, kind of crushed things down. Let's see if we can do a little fudging back the other way. Just kind of give her a little bit more original. Better? I'll go with that. Better than what it was, right? 40 miles an hour. You guys are nuts. Well, it's actually a few days later, and before I went home the other day, I went and I actually fiberglassed the back side of that panel that was busted up. First taped it together. Hopefully, I may not have screwed up, or we're going to see whether the tape comes off with the stuff oozed through. Oh, good. I was afraid it was going to get welded on there. They do make a, or did make replacements for it, and about 900 people sent me the link to it. I kind of found it too that they sold replacement ones, but the ad is uh, from 10 years ago. They were 60 bucks a piece back then. I haven't called on it. 
and I figure in the future if I want to go that route I could possibly contact him but for now I'm just going to kind of put it together with the pieces that it has and I like the old ratty look so it's being restored not restored all right that one's I think there's one I, I made a bridge out of. Let's go see how. Is it this one? This one might stick because there's like a two inch hole. Nope, that's not it. I know it's there. <laughs> oh, there it is right there. Nice. I might just go a little on that part where the pieces were missing all together. It probably weighs twice as much as it did before. Right, so I'm happy with that. We may do a little bit, a couple of the other ones are missing hunks and pieces too, but at least this has got some structure back so we can actually hang it on the machine and not have it blow off in the wind. <laughs> section was missing altogether but better than nothing right I guess we should jump on that gas tank and do whatever we're gonna go do for that that is pretty scaly in there it's not terrible Not too bad. <laughs> they all do that. <laughs> Old age. Uh, a couple things we could do. We could do. We could do acid, put bolts in it. Let's go try something a little different. See how that works. A couple more. I like mine spicy. I'm just gonna leak out. I'm gonna have to put something on that cap to keep it from leaking. that too. Does it leak out anywhere else? Nope. Good. Give her about a third of the way we'll word her. Maybe we'll take a piece of plastic or something under the cap and lock that down. Well, that's clanking away. I say maybe we'll take the bike, we'll spin it around so that the front wheel's exposed and we'll start tearing into that, get that front tire and stuff done and see what we got for our front end and any issues with it. Now, I think we're supposed to just be able to unthread the center of those handlebars. And the front should drop out. That was pretty easy. Let's go see about how it wants to fold or if it'll fold. Actually, shouldn't. I think these are supposed to twist in or something. I'm not sure. Let's go. Let's see? Let me back up a little. I guess those handlebars, I would think you would need no tools though. 
I see clamps on them right here with springs. So how do they, how would they tuck in? I don't know if you push down on them or spring loaded, lift up. We'll say lift up. There we go. Try folding that up again. Let's back you up again. First time getting tucked. <laughs> That's still not far enough though. What's it hit now? have more of a bend to the frame I'll show you yeah it looks like we got some more bending to do because that is supposed to drop into there you think it's the seat or you think it's the frame I think it's the frame this thing must have taken a a good hit at some time we may have to do the same with some some gentle persuasion with wood see if you can get that to line up and drop in there What's the sense of having a suitcase scooter if it won't fold up into a suitcase, right? I hope we don't launch the whole thing on the floor. Let's see if we get a little slight persuasion in there. Like a glove. A snug glove. Not much room to go. Let's give her a little, I'm gonna go a little bit more. Try to split that distance, you know. Hair too much. Eighth inch on each side. She's tucked. Does look like I should drop down a little bit further. Let's see if I'm missing anything. Ah, the, uh, the grips are hitting the lift. Let's go. There we go. Is it in? <laughs> go ahead. Say your own jokes. I think that's close enough for a win. Uh, I don't know. Let's go do that front tire. Maybe we'll just knock that out. You already seen the back one getting done. Let me. Uh, if there's anything surprising when I go and do that, I'll let you know. Pop that out of there first. See if it needs any more. Oh, we just gonna wear holes through it. Seems dry, that's a good sign. I'm plucking around like crazy. Go bring that inside, we'll drain it out, see what it looks like. Done something. We can rinse that out in the sink a little bit better. We'll take a flashlight peek in there. It looks like we have to go a little bit more though. Still got a ways to go. I wonder if I can get it. That side looks pretty good. I wonder if I can mount it straight out on the tire so the, the stuff kind of rotates like this. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. I'll give it a shot though.
Let's go take another peek. Water's cleaner. I think. just live with that. I'm just afraid of going too much that we're going to blow open the scene. I think these are just they're possibly soldered together. Looks like it was made out of tin. I'm not sure if that's solder or a weld. Kind of looks like. Kind of looks like lead, doesn't it? So I don't want to push my luck. I could always, you know, vinegar, acid, all those kind of things. But I think I've knocked off anything that's going to contaminate the fuel. We'll see. I'm going to go dry it out, get the moisture out of it, and we'll leave it alone for now. So I'm going to push up on that dent a little. I should probably measure how far over it is. Right to there. Form the neck. It doesn't have enough curve to be able to get up there and push on it. Yeah, I'm like barely touching it. Yeah, I'd rather have a dent than, than mess up the throat of it. See if I have anything else that has a little bit more of a, a curve to it. A little quick drying action. Well, that's getting warm quickly. <laughs> Ouch. That front wheel's all done, cleaned up and, and greased. She's a, a little bit of a tight fit. Kind of rubs a hair on the plastic. I tried shimming it a little bit one way or another. But I guess we're going to go with that. I'm looking at it. I'm trying to figure out where that's supposed to... I saw them drop it in from the top. I don't really see that happening. Maybe that goes in first and then the handlebars go down. And I would think... Oh, maybe right in that area. There's really not too much. Maybe something like that. I know the cover puffs out a little bit. But I didn't think it was that much. Plus, you still have to get the gas tank up inside there, too. So, let's unfold it. Uh, take a better peek at that front end. We'll clean up those handlebars a little bit. Uh, we can do the gas tank air cleaner. Definitely a tight squeeze. Let's put the air filter housing back on. We know we need a actual filter. Can we get away with? Yes, might double that up, might, might not. That's pretty good. Have to take it back apart. Anyway, then we got the gas tank. That sits right. We're just gonna go just like that, and it's got two straps that hold it in place. But we're gonna leave that off for a minute just so we have access to things. And they pack everything in there tight, huh? We do this one handed. Yeah. 
I see maybe we go take this plastic off of here and we'll look into the cables while everything's still a little on the loose side. We'll deal with the throttle and the brake cable. And possibly we'll clean up some of the crap that's on these handlebars. You gotta get, you know, is that a throttle? It turns, that's a good sign. But the cables are just hammered. Maybe we can possibly recore them or just put new stuff in it. See, it's got the throttle cable going through the plastic of it. See if we can wiggle this thing out of here. Not cracking anything. Where does that one go? That one's got a place to escape. Nothing like 60 year old plastic to try to undo without breaking anymore. I think we got it. There we go. It's a blue at one time. I think somebody painted black and the back's got a bunch of gold paint on it. Again, we're going to leave all that pretty much well, well enough alone. Uh, we can work on first. Probably the throttle cable. Let's go. It's got tape and stuff up here. Let's go cut this stuff off and see what we have to work with and see if we can actually take that apart and get the throttle guts apart and see if possibly just maybe thread a new cable into the center of that jacket. It actually looks decent. I don't see any bad breaks. I would actually even just use it over. It depends what the other end looks like. It just, it just goes right to that spring right there. That little hole sticking out of it. it. Looks like it's got a screw on the back side that it grabs and that just works the throttle. We're gonna thread that. Little drag pin here. And I think the end of the cable has a square block on it that just slides back and forth and it probably locks into like a yeah, a bit of a groove. There's the groove inside there. It's showing up. We'll wash these pieces up a little bit and uh, definitely need some new new grease. So it looks like the cable has a little bit of a square block on the end of it and that sits in that channel, jacket sits there, that sits in that channel, something like that and as you twist the grip it pushes and pulls the cable and then that, I don't know if you can see, it's got a channel in there, it goes right up through there. And it looks like that grabs that pad. Something like that. And as you twist, it pushes and pulls the cable. And then the handlebar holds the pad up in position. All that just seems like it needs to be cleaned up a bit though. And also the damage on the end here, I'm not quite sure what happened with this stuff. I may try to stick it inside a piece of pipe put a piece of pipe inside here and kind of tap on this see if you can get all this to lay flat again it looks like it got like hammered or hit or pushed with a screwdriver or crunched or one of those or all of those
So the thing, this thing is called a cable oiler. And what it does, it has a rubber barrel on the inside of it and it tapers like a ice cream cone for lack of better definition. And you crank down the clamp around it, it closes up, seals off the cable and uh, seals off the jacket. And then it allows you to take any kind of spray nozzle and in the hole and hopefully it will fill the jacket up in between sometimes it shoots backwards like that Let's see if we can tweak it a little bit and if it does that's fine but as long as it goes down the cable and shoots out the other end it's kind of what you're looking for plus you, you can kind of feed it from both sides too that's what that does, and it shoots oil and lubes the inside of the cable. I'm going to go do both sides of that. Sounds like somebody is playing outside. Let's try that side. I think that's good for another 60 years. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. It's got a little slide like that. Go give her a little. A little helping hand there. And then we need to get that barrel in there. Actually, we need to do the same. We should probably get a decent amount. Surprised there's not like a shim for this area to take up the last little distance, you know? Instead of it just kind of floating like that. I say that's more than enough. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can get that to feed. into that channel. That should do it. I'm gonna put my set screws in. Looks like it was in a little further. I'll work on them. I don't have a grip for it right at the moment. We have what's left of the old one. I might be able to glue that one on. I'm gonna go take a peek upstairs too. If I got something that kind of looks the part, maybe we'll put them on instead because it was, it was pretty beat. It's supposed to run through the that plastic that's on there. I'm gonna leave that off for now. But we have throttleage. So it gets full throttle. Almost full throttle. Give her a little that. Yep. Yeah. And it goes goes to idle. We'll call that good. Let's go see what we can do for a brake cable. Well the brake cable's already busted off on that, and so I'm just gonna go pull this jacket right out of this whole thing get a better idea of the length see if i can find something that's suitable that's a uh, maybe a little bit tougher than you know, like a bicycle cable but we'll see what we got well i dug out my stash of cables and i was hoping to have one of the heavier ones like that or motorcycle type brake cables 
And the top one, actually this, yeah, this one is the one that I need and none of those are even getting close to it. So I had to go dig into bicycle stuff and this is what we're gonna have to go with. Bicycle brake cable, you know, it's probably, I'm guessing from what the old stuff was. Yeah, about 70% of the size maybe. But I'm gonna run what we brung. Yeah, so I just used the same jacket over again, same adjuster. It's all the way in, so over time I could just kind of crank this whole assembly out and it'll get tighter. It's got, I don't know, half inch of play for it. And it's a pinch on this side, just pinches the cable, hole goes through a bolt, and you draw the bolt down, it pinches on the cable. On the other end, I left the nipple on there and I actually drilled a little bit hole in the handlebar. So I fed on the top side, it does the same thing, but with a bolt with a pinch hole in it, is I let it come through and then on the back side is a nub from the cable that can't pull through. And that's it. Chain doesn't like to play on that side. Nice that it's a two stroke, you just lean it over, it's got no gas in it, no oil. I did want to cut off any of the cable yet just in case I need to do some modifications or change stuff up so I was tie wrapping that one off and making sure it's staying out of harm's way and I did the same with the the throttle cable and gave it the whatever extra was already on there and as I'm looking at it I see a crack going all the way around yeah good thing I saw that huh so I'm gonna go clean that up throw a weld on there actually it's cracked there too you see it down below this one definitely went off some some sweet jumps. Yeah, that's all busted right there too, right through. And all the way around. So the only thing it's attached to is that and these two. Ain't no triangulation going on there. Yeah, might want to fix that. Yeah, I would definitely say these have gone past their expiration date. I mean, I could probably spray them back on there to get them on this one. This one's not so bad. But I got some old, like Honda 70 monkey bike bars. And I think they are the correct two sizes. I'm not sure of that. Throttle is always larger when it's got an internal throttle because it's got a sleeve that goes around it. So I'm going to do my best probably to put them in hot water. And we'll see if it kind of softens them up enough to get them to slide off. Or I could put that in my purse and just take a stupid thing off. It worked out pretty good. One's got a tear in it from taking a crash at some point in its life. But it goes along with the bike. <laughs> I got a throttle, brake one's on there. Cables are all set. I got a couple of clips 
clips like this that still need to be put on. I'm gonna worry about that after the plastics. Gotta figure out where they probably go. I would figure there's probably two here. Maybe another one here. Tanks bolted up. I didn't hook the fuel line up yet though. Pretty good. Let's go and fold it up and just see how things kind of line up and how cables want to do that and that. Got like another. I think it might be just because of the way it's sitting on the bench. What hits? Nothing, nothing, nothing. It's just like where it lies over the sprocket over there. Random muffler, but it looks like this side should go down more. I wonder if this can go over to the other side. There we go. Is that it? It's like so close. Yeah. I'm surprised you don't have like a position that they lock in and click. So they know where they need to go. Yeah, I think that's it. Hmm. That's a nice little package, if I do say so myself. Uh, I'm gonna go flip it back open and let's go put the front wheel on it. I'm more concerned now with getting it to uh, drive. <laughs> Sound like a good idea? I do too. So I've been putting little doodads back on and plastic pieces in the seat and etc. And I thought we were all set over here, except for the fact that the pull start. Again, it's not the original pull start. And I believe the video that I saw, it they pulled backwards on it. So that's why it was indexed the direction that it is. But that is too far past the cover to be any good. Straight up is going to be nothing unless we try to have to pull it and open the seat every time we want to go do it. And then possibly can we index it. If you do 180, that's probably going to be about the same amount. I'd say it's, it's probably going to be right about there. I don't know if we can get a good pull on it. I think it's just going to tear at the cover. Well, we could always just rotate it and see what happens, right? It's not too good. Too much of a asset to us at the moment and the other thing too the one if we could index it forward yeah mm -hmm. so straight up we click it one more maybe i was wondering if we could pull from the front too if i index it around i can't get it we just flip the seat up because you're going to want to go grab the choke and stuff anyway well, at least when it's cold and then maybe you can yank it 
this way through here. We'll put it back up. I'm going to try it, see what happens. I got that off, and it was like that. We could do that. It's kind of not terribly clumsy. I guess if you got to open the seat, you got to open the seat all the way anyway, right? Or we do that. How will the panel? You can get it, but I think it's just going to be such a sharp turn. Now we can still kind of grab it from the front and pull it too. It's under the gas tank, but I don't know. It actually kind of looks like it's closer to an exit point than it is. I mean, you got to go down about 12 over here. You're about six or seven here. So we're going to go with that for now. Guess if you pull it up to there and then go. Yeah, it's doable. Try popping that cover on. Yeah, I think. I don't know. That'll work. I thought it was gonna have a lot more drag going around that corner. Than it does. It actually has, you know, the bottom's only half open too. I guess you can go. That kind of sucks. <laughs> I like this better. We'll go with that. Well, the next step was to start chasing some lights. And I'm like, did I show them the headlight that I got? And that was put away where I wouldn't damage it. Keep it out of harm's way. And I've been searching for the last 45 minutes. I started putting stuff away. It's usually the, the best way to go. Okay, start getting rid of some of the tools, clean up the floor, put the welder away. And I'm like, I would have swore I sat it down in this corner to keep it out of harm's way. And I did. <laughs> that was a great idea. Anyway, that really kind of looks the part, doesn't it? Matches the rest of the bike as far as its stay, as far as its patina. But I don't know where it was mounted that when it folded up, it was not an issue. I don't know. That would be in the way of your hands, right? So I'm kind of guessing. Who knows? Could even been up on a handlebar. And then it twists with the grip. So I got to do a little bit of homework. So that I can put that in a decent location. Is that rub marks there? Looking for like old indications of. Where something might have went, I almost knocked it off the table. <laughs> that would have been good. Son of a. All right, so I'm gonna go home and go eat. And I'll pick this back up. And I was hoping I already have it done for a ride, but it takes as much time as it takes, right? Well, guys, it's a little bit more in the future. And I got some stuff done, didn't film it, but it was mostly just chasing the lights. And I cobbled up that light that I had, had to cut it and re-weld it to get it to sit back further on the front end. So when it's folded up, it clears the fact that it can fold up. <laughs> Ran some wiring to it. I got an extra wire here. I want to look at kill switch. This is for kill switch, but I don't have a, a button set up. I'm going to keep looking for one. I want to put a button probably right around here on the handlebars where you can kind of reach it with your thumb and uh, shut it down when you want to. For now, you just ground the wire out, I guess. <laughs> I use kind of period correct. I don't know if that's asbestos or fiberglass wire. It's stuff that's really old, both colors. The black is too. Just to try to keep in keeping with the, uh, the look of it. Other than the butt connector that stands out like a sore thumb. We leave the side covers off while we do our preliminary run. It's got brake and tail light. Both are back in here. I haven't, other than hooking power to it, external power to it, I don't know what it's going to do when we fire it up though. Made some clearance for it so because this has to be able to swing up and down. So it's got some play in the wires for the rear tire to move up and down. And just snake the wires down. It's got all these little clips that were on it. I kind of guesstimated where they would have been. 
I think we're ready to go put some gas in it, fire it up, make sure everything is functioning. We can also see if those lights work too. So get you in a stand, get some gas, let's give her. I know that says 50 to one, but I threw some more two stroke oil in it. It's probably more like 40, maybe 35. It doesn't have any ethanol in it. So it won't beat up that diaphragm that's in there. It's supposed to get 100 miles to the gallon. That should be about 14 miles worth. And is the gas on? I don't think it is. No, nope, it was. Give that a sec. Make sure the carburetor doesn't have gas spewing out of it anywhere. We'll give her a couple yanks, see what it does. Fire it up, runs full throttle, shoots across the garage. <laughs> Choke us forward, see what that does for us. Give her a little bit of... Full start sounds good. Run her a little bit and do some uh, air fuel mix adjusting. Get the lights working. I want to go just check that kill switch. We know we're good to go. Late for the airport.
we took a little trip down to Brian's dead end street so we can do some little putting around on it. Kind of matches the truck. Would you say so, sir? It fits right in the neighborhood, that's yeah. for sure. Kind of has the same beat upness as the truck does. Yeah. We'll get that off of there, we'll fire her up, and the little Brian be our cameraman. 100% it's going to fire. It just takes off with me not even on it. Ghost ride. What'd you say? <laughs> it's 100% it's going to fire. Okay, I bet if I turn the camera off, it'll start right up. Carrying up one hand. Yeah. 
Let's see what it takes to tuck it away. I left the one side cover off just so I can kind of see. I was almost to the point where I didn't believe him that it was all going to fit in there, but it did. Just needed to spend some time on it. It's tight, but everything has its place. That works out pretty good. It needs really new plastics all the way around. I think all the pieces are available. You're probably looking at, at my guess would be $500 for that. So we'll see whether I want to chase that or not. Uh, I really should go for points and plug and condenser. New ones, it's just old stuff kind of cleaned up and a diaphragm and a carburetor. I think if I get those pieces done, it will come back to be a nice, reliable unit. It's a little finicky as far as starting it. But uh, again, I think those tune-up components really need to be changed from the 60-year-old uh, ones that are in there. Well, that's pretty cool for a novelty of what it is. I like it. All right, guys, with that, I think we're going to go sign her off. I want to thank you all for kind of hanging out with me and uh, doing a little bit of ranching and having fun with some old antique oddball stuff that it is. I thoroughly enjoyed myself, and I hope you did too. All right, guys, till the next one. I'll see you then. Later.